We use what's called a base 10 system, and that's because we work with 10 numerals from 0 through to 9. So a way of exploring the binary system is to look at the base 10 system and how we teach children. This is our units, tens, hundreds and thousands chart and we're going to be working with this just a little bit to understand how binary works later on. Okay, so to start off with, if I'm counting objects, I might begin with nothing. So I'm going to put zeros in all of these columns and that indicates that I have nothing. Okay, so let's do some counting. Now what I'm going to do is count these little squares. If I have one square when I'm before I had nothing, I then need to change something on the chart which is the units. So I'm going to add one because we have one of one thing. And as I add pieces, as you know, we begin to change this. So because I've got two, I have two units. If I add one more, I now have three. So if I had 10 squares, So I've just got 10 squares there and I've just put the last one down and just before that we were on 9 units, we had 9 individual units. I've added the 10th, we're going to carry across because we have 110 now. This is one lot of 10. So I'm going to put 0 and carry that to have 110. Now if I add one more square here, I now have one lot of 10 and one spare. So that's one lot of 10 and one spare. The binary system works with the base of two. So this means that we're working with two numerals, which are zero and one. And previously, we worked with these columns and we can do the same to explore binary. It makes it a little bit easier. Each column is two times greater than the previous. So we're going to start with one. Got one. 2, now 2 times greater, 4, 2 times greater is 8. So we're just going to work with uh, 4 columns for now. Binary, if I have nothing, then we're going to start with zeros again. Now, if I have one object that I need to count and I want to want to transfer that information, I'm going to change this into 1. Now, if I add another object, I've got 2, but I'm going to do what I did before with the base 10 system and transfer because I've only got 1, 1 and we're only working with a 0 or a 1 here. So now we've got 2, we're going to put a 1 here, indicating that we have one lot of 2. And we're going to put a 0 here. Now, if I add, if I add one more, sorry, I'm going to have 3. And this indicates now that I need to change something. And I'm going to change this to a 1. Now I have because the 2 plus the 1 equals 3. Now, if I add one more, then that means we have one group of 4. 
And so I need to put one here and change these back to zeros. Often we refer to binary as either being on or off. So you can look at this chart here as well and see that we have an on, which is indicated by the one in the four column and off is for the two and the ones column. We're given numbers like this, so it might look like zero, one, zero, zero. And instead of writing and using the base 10 system, we would write four. We've written four using binary, so we've used zeros and ones to say four. So we can indicate this by going four plus zero plus zero equals four base 10 system, we learn our numbers off by heart. And also with binary, you can learn um, these sequences off by heart. So you can learn and remember that this is a one, this is a two, and each time it's growing times two. So I'm just doubling it, okay? And you start to remember when you see these numbers, you start to recognize that if there's a one in the fours column, then that means four. If someone's given me a number, let's say 1010, what's that telling me? It's telling me that I've got 1 in the 8's column, so 8 plus 1 in the 2's column, which is 2, and there's nothing else there, so we've got 10. So I'm going to write some numbers on the boards and let's see if you can have a go at guessing what numbers they are and working it out in your head. So far we've been exploring binary using four bits. So we've got one, two, three, and four symbols. And this represents one, two, four, and eight. We call four digits or four bits one nibble. But what happens if we continue on counting? So we want to make it a number 16. So we don't have anywhere else to go here, which means that we need to add another nibble and continue counting. Usually binary is grouped into fours. So what we would do is add another sequence here grouped into four. And eight bits or two nibbles equals one byte. And as you can see here, the next uh, nibble continues on counting from 8 to 16, 32, 64, and 128. I'm going to pick a number and we're going to try and figure out the binary code for it. Okay, so let's go with the number 29. So to figure this out, I'm going to go to the highest possible number. So I'm going to go to 16 because if I go any further, I hit the column 32 and that's way past the 29. So I'm going to put a tick or a one in this case in the 16 column. Now that gives me 16 points but I need to get up to 29 so I'm going to add some numbers from the 8 column which means I'll put a one in this column here and that brings me up to the number 24. So I want to make it to 29, which means I've still got to add some more. And I'm going to add 4, which gives me 28. So I'll add a tick here. And I need to reach 29, but if I add 2, that's going to put me past. 
So I'm going to skip that one and just add one, which brings me to the binary code for 29. And that's all for me for now. But I'll leave you with one question. What's your age in binary? Bye.